inside the ride at all times, or you'll end up like me. <laughs> Ahoy! Set sail for treasure! Batten down the hatches! A storm's a-brewing! This be no normal storm, it be the Kraken! Take that, you scurvy mongrel! Yar! Fire in the hole! Ghost pirates! The real treasure was friendship all along! 
Happy birthday! Now, let's see how you did. It'd be only ten tickets to ride this ride. You'll have a whale of a time! Disclaimer, there are no actual whales on Captain Foxy's pirate adventure. It'd be a nautical idiom if you catch me drift. Please wait until the ride comes to a full and complete stop. Motion trigger, breaker room. Motion trigger, boiler room. Motion trigger, secondary service elevator ventilation shaft. Hello? Can you hear me? Don't exit this room, okay? This isn't a mistake. This room isn't a mistake. I had to hide these logs away from the core gameplay files, in a place that only a beta tester would look, and in a place where the files could be protected. I just really, really hope that the next development team finds this before the game is released to the public. This game has some kind of malicious code in it that we haven't been able to fully contain, or even understand for that matter. We're over budget and out of time. But that's not the reason that we're shutting down. Listen, I have to keep this short so the file size will be small enough to fly under the radar. There are more. They may not be in order. I saw it for the first time today. There was a character I couldn't make out who it was, standing at the end of the hall. I thought it was just bugged out, so I made a note of it and kept playing. But then it was looking in the window, and not like Chica or Bonnie would. It was like it was actually looking in the window, seeing what I was doing. I heard a pretty heated conversation this morning between Dale, our manager, and someone else on the line. It really feels like this project is in trouble, in no small part because of the lawsuit, I'm sure. There has to be a lawsuit, there's no way there isn't. It happened in this building just a few doors down from me. I think it's made worse by the fact that Jeremy tried to tell us something was wrong, but as a dev team, we all just saw it as a challenge to find what the problem was and fix it. Who could have known that? I have to go. Have you ever heard of a guillotine paper slicer? It sounds made up, but it's an actual piece of office equipment. I didn't even know we had one in the supply room. I guess they're more common at businesses that do a lot of graphic design work. I remember seeing one when I was still in school, and even then, I knew how dangerous it looked. I was always afraid of losing a finger. That seems so silly now. Jeremy used to do design work. I guess that's how he knew it was there. The drawers have been emptied out. Someone was here. I don't think it was spring cleaning either. No. There was plastic on the floor. Someone was definitely here during the night. It had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation. Told us to scan it said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. It was a budget thing, I guess. It was just junk. Circuit boards and things like that. Looked pretty old. Somehow, though, there was usable code on some of it. It seemed to take hold by itself. Things started changing. But then, he started appearing. At least that's what Jeremy said. I came in early that morning. No one else was there. At least that's what I thought. The supply room was lit. I didn't even notice Jeremy standing in the testing room as I walked past. The supply room was so bright, glowing from all the way down the hall. Jeremy complained of nightmares when he came in this morning. He wasn't talking about it like someone telling a friend about his dreams, though. He was pale. Looked like he hadn't eaten in days. He spent an hour talking in Dale's office, but it didn't look like he was given much sympathy. When he came out, he went directly back to the testing room. He doesn't even jump anymore. Nothing scares him. He just stands there like he's talking to someone. Sometimes he rocks from side to side. We were told to leave him alone. I knew I was in line to do the testing next. They'd been prepping me for it. I guess they knew that Jeremy would need to be replaced soon. You can always tell when a company is getting ready to fire someone. They start giving out written warnings for silly things, making sure to build a paper trail and make a case for a firing. Things that normally no one would care about suddenly become grave offenses, all worthy of being written and documented. I guess it works two ways, because it also encourages a person to quit rather than be scrutinized so heavily. I think Jeremy was too far gone to consider that option, though. The thing about it is, 
that I don't think they were going to fire him because of anything he was doing wrong. They just knew he'd seen something. They needed to discredit him. There was something that looked like a Halloween mask laying on the floor. I didn't understand. Ink must have spilled. It was only then that I heard a shuffle from the testing room and realized Jeremy must be there. I went back and peered in the window. I couldn't see his face. He had the visor covering his head. He had ink spilled on himself as well. The front of his shirt looked black in the dark room. He turned his head in my direction, but I don't think he knew I was there. I was told I had three days to finish Jeremy's work, but I know it's just passing the time. They don't really expect me to do anything. It's just to keep up appearances until the buyout is complete. We have to look like we have things under control. There's another potential development studio that wants to pick up from here, but who knows what kind of lies they're being fed to convince them to do it. Against my better judgment, I'm going to do my best to see what's here, make notes of it, and try to isolate where this thing is hiding. At least then, the next person that tests this will have a chance of getting rid of it. Today was my last day of beta testing, and the anomaly that I've been seeing is nowhere to be found. But after inspecting some of the files, it seems that it's attached itself to these logs. My logs. That can't be an accident. So now I have to make a choice. Do I leave these logs here for you to find? Or do I try to purge this thing myself by destroying the logs? I've chosen the latter. I can't delete them. By creating a protected area to store these logs apart from the game, I effectively gave this thing a safe place to hide itself. It's in here now. I may not be able to delete it, but I might be able to do something else now that it's attached itself. I have an idea. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer who supposedly made up a bunch of crazy stories that tarnished the brand. But that's not true at all. In their haste to develop this VR game and clear their name, they sent us some things I don't think they intended us to see, such as a hard drive containing emails between Fazbear Entertainment and a certain indie developer. Fazbear Entertainment hired the game developer. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up, a campaign to discredit everything. I ran a fragmentation program on the area of memory that was storing these logs for you. I effectively broke the files into pieces and broke the anomaly along with it. That means that you won't have my warnings to guide you, but hopefully it also means that this anomaly, this virus, or whatever it is, will remain broken and unable to do more damage. Hello. You don't know me. I had created a series of logs for you documenting the troubled development of this VR game that you're now testing in hopes that you, whoever you are, and whatever team you are with will abandon development. Now I fear that those logs are being used as a Trojan horse. If you are unable to abandon development, hide all traces of these logs that I've created. I fear that finding them and reassembling them will also reassemble the very thing I've tried so desperately to destroy. There is a way to kill it. It wants to escape. To escape through someone. Someone plugged into this game. That's you now. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. Then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. Play the music and flip the switch. That will cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. I don't know when it will come for you. Welcome to the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience. Fazbear Entertainment is excited to join the digital age, and what better way to do that than with an edge-of-your-seat virtual reality experience? We know that Fazbear Entertainment has developed something of a bad reputation over the last few decades, and while it's true that some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events, the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete lunatic. Lawsuits pending. But we aren't above laughing at ourselves. Ha ha ha.
That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, lies, that you've been fed over the last several years into a hilarious VR game in the hopes that we can finally move past these childish ghost stories and develop a new relationship with you as well as your kids. Don't forget the merch perfect for birthdays. So sit back and enjoy a few scares. We do, however, ask that you agree to a simple waiver before you play. It's mostly just legal mumbo jumbo and isn't at all based on user experiences thus far or injuries associated with testing. Just touch the button to agree, and then we can jump right into some harmless fun that can't harm you at all in any harmful way. Thank you for playing the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience. You acknowledge that Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference, real-world manifestations of digital characters, nightmares, night terrors, night sweats. Welcome to the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience. Use the console in front of you to navigate the menu and pick one of the frightening experiences available. By completing these scenarios, more will become available. You'll see plenty of familiar faces and some new ones as well. So stay a while and have a good time. And remember, despite the temporary horror you may experience, this is a completely controlled environment and you aren't in any real danger. Fazbear Entertainment not responsible for real danger. Please make a selection from the virtual menu. We hope you're enjoying the Fazbear Virtual Experience. Please be aware that there may be visual artifacts left behind from the beta testing phase of development. If you see any such artifacts, we recommend that you not interact with them. We'll weed them out eventually. There's no guarantee that we'll weed them out eventually. Are you having fun yet? That's great to hear. We went to great lengths to create an authentic VR experience, including using scanned photographs for reference and using original performance routines where applicable. Using proprietary technology developed by Fazbear Entertainment, our VR development teams were able to use vintage control boards almost like plug and play, digitally recreating performances and personalities from the past in an instant. It looks like you're making great progress, and more importantly, you're staying in your lane and sticking to the script, which is exactly what our risk assessment team was hoping you'd do. Please continue to enjoy the Fazbear virtual experience. You're doing a great job, and no doubt having a great time as well. As a reminder, please be sure to only interact with core gameplay elements and avoid anything that could potentially be considered a glitch, mistake, or embedded message from unauthorized personnel. It seems that you may have inadvertently accessed an unauthorized portion of the game. Please be aware that interacting with unofficial game code can be harmful to you and potentially damaging to our reputation. The Fazbear Virtual Experience is a robust title, but it almost never made it to market. The first development team had a lot of problems, made some sloppy mistakes, and was eventually pulled from the project. For that reason, we recommend that you avoid any comments, notes, or warnings that may have been left behind by previous development teams. We assure you that they are wholly untrustworthy. It seems that, on multiple occasions now, you have disappeared from the authorized boundaries of the Fazbear virtual experience. We would ask that you not do it again. Would you like to hear a funny fun fact? One of the previous development teams made a hilarious mistake, one that may or may not have resulted in an undesirable anomaly entering the game's code. Please accept that statement as our full legal disclaimer and absolution of responsibility and potential harm to you. Funtime Foxy is motion activated. For this reason, it's important to keep the room dark, as to not accidentally activate her. You have been provided with a flash beacon. Use it if you need to get your bearings and to ensure you don't bump into anything. However, use it as sparingly as possible. Proceed forward to reach the parts and service room. Welcome back to parts and service. Oh no, it looks like Bonnie's guitar is out of tune and must be recalibrated. First, we must access his harmonization module located inside his secondary throat pipe. To access the throat pipe, both eyes must first be removed. You must be as precise as possible when removing the eyes from their respective sockets. First, firmly grip Bonnie's left eye and carefully remove it from its socket. Great job! Deposit the left eye in the cleaning receptacle on your left. Well done! Now, firmly grip Bonnie's right eye and carefully remove it from its socket. 
Deposit the right eye in the cleaning receptacle on your right. Good job! To open Bonnie's faceplate, carefully press the two buttons located on either side of Bonnie's jaw. When done correctly, you should hear two small clicks. Well done! You now have access to Bonnie's harmonization module. Press the blinking button inside Bonnie's secondary throat pipe to enter calibration mode. Something is not right. One of those notes is out of tune. You may push the button again to replay the audio check. Press the colored button that corresponds to the incorrect note. Press the blinking button again to verify your work. Great job! Bonnie is in tune and ready for his solo. Let's close him up. Simply replace both eyes in the same order that you removed them, then close up the faceplate and we'll call it a day. Well done! That concludes your parts and services task. See you next time. Welcome back to Parts and Service. There have been customer complaints about Chica's acrid smell. Sounds like Chica has been rummaging around the kitchen again. Remove all food particles from Chica's exterior and place it in the refuse bin on your right. Good job! Make sure Chica is not hiding any other treats inside her beak. To open her beak, carefully press the two buttons located on the sides of Chica's head. Oh no! It looks like Chica has picked up some unwanted friends. To clear the infestation, apply the Fazbear Entertainment Restaurant Grade Chemi Spray to Chica's exterior. Press the button under the hanging canister to activate the Chemi Spray. Avoid inhaling the Chemi Spray. Exposure to cleaning, disinfecting, and maintenance chemicals may result in respiratory problems, skin, or eye irritation. Good job! Now reattach Chica's upper arm, hand, and cupcake plate. Well done! Oh no! It looks like Chica needs another dose of the Chemi Spray. Do not let the infestation spread. Be sure to give the canister button another push as needed. Oh no! It looks like the Chemi Spray is no longer effective. To combat the infestation, pick them off by hand if necessary. Return the cupcake to Chica's plate. Place the cupcake on the plate. Please place the cupcake on the plate. Great job! Chica is ready to serve pizza and hugs to the kids again. Take a complimentary slice of pizza for a job well done. Go on. Take it. Eat it. Delicious. See you next time. Welcome back to Parts and Service. It looks like one of our guests left a personal item on our star attraction. Let's return it to the lost and found. Carefully grab and remove the child's hat from Freddy's mouth. Freddy's got a pretty good hold of it. Give it another firm tug. Good job! Now place the hat in the lost and found bin on your right. While we're at it, let's make sure there isn't anything else stuck inside. To access Freddy's chest cavity, grab Freddy's bow tie and pull it outwards. Well done! Freddy's chest cavity is now open. Remove the child's watch and place it in the lost and found bin. Be careful not to touch any of Freddy's sensitive wiring. Good job! It appears there is a child's shoe wedged behind Freddy's music box. The music box must be removed before you can access the child's shoe. Gently grasp the music box and extract it from Freddy's chest cavity before the safety latch descends. Place the music box on the work table to your left. Great job! To reset the safety latch, press the button located on Freddy's endoskeleton. Now remove the child's shoe and place it in the lost and found bin. Well done! Return the music box to Freddy's chest cavity and we'll call it a day. Oh no! You seem to have mishandled Freddy's music box. This is not good. A replacement may be found on the work table. A slow and even pace is recommended. Crisis averted. To close Freddy's chest cavity, press the large black button on the center of Freddy's face. That concludes your time in parts and service. Your pay will be docked accordingly. Welcome back to Parts and Service. Foxy has been out of commission for quite some time. This series of simple repairs should return him to full working condition. First, carefully pick up and place Foxy's head on his endoskeleton. Oh no! It looks like Foxy's proprietary servo motors are malfunctioning. It is recommended that you keep an eye on Foxy at all times. You will need to place new control fuses in the exposed receptacles to continue. Retrieve the fuse from drawer number one that matches Foxy's leg receptacle. To avoid bodily harm, 
Wait for Foxy's legs to stop moving before inserting the control fuse. Good job. Foxy has regained control of his legs. A gentle reminder, it is recommended that you keep an eye on Foxy at all times. Oh no, it looks like a former employee attempted to repair Foxy's chest motor using an incorrect fuse. Carefully, remove the incorrect fuse from Foxy's chest and insert it into Foxy's upper arm receptacle. Well done. The remaining chest fuses are located in drawers number 2 and number 4. Fix both fuses to continue. Good job. Retrieve Foxy's eye from drawer number 3. When Foxy's eye patch is fully open, place the eye back into his eye socket. Well done. This concludes all your parts and service tasks. Pirate Cove can now be reopened. Welcome to Vet Repair. Fazbear Entertainment prides itself on having the most comfortable facilities. Each facility is set to a perfect 72 degrees all the time. The four active indicator lights mean we have a well-functioning ventilation system. Your headlamp should protect you from any critters who may have stumbled into the ducts. As a certified vent technician, you should need no instruction. However, in case of an emergency, it is important to remember that as the vent technician, you should never, under any circumstances, attempt to a perfect 72 degrees. Good job. See you next time. Welcome to Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental. It has been zero days since last incident. Emergency ventilation repairs may be necessary to reach the boiler room on sub-basement G. We apologize for the claustrophobic accommodations of the secondary service elevator, but the comfort of the main elevator is well above your pay grade. Now, let's get to work. Well done. A perfect 72 degrees. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fazbear Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, Freddy Fazbear. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fazbear Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, the only, 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 Congratulations on completing the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience. You did an amazing job. You might be wondering if you missed anything, or if there's anything left to see. So just take my word for it, you didn't miss anything, and there's nothing left to see. We're looking forward to a fresh start with you, now that we've all had a good laugh at these tall tales, and now that you realize that Fazbear Entertainment is a safe, family-friendly brand with no skeletons in our closet. So goodbye for now, and we'll see you on the toy aisle. Bye-bye. 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 Bye bye Take care now. Congratulations! It appears you have been granted access to additional holiday content. Press the special button in the candy pail to enter the Halloween hub. Keep in mind that this DLC pack is nothing more than a festive holiday-themed add-on, which has absolutely no hidden intent or purpose. So, have fun! You may press the button in the candy pail to return to the pizzeria hub at any time. Keep in mind that this DLC pack is nothing more than a festive holiday-themed add-on, which has absolutely no hidden intent or purpose. So, have fun! Welcome to the Fazbear Entertainment Fulfillment Center. Today, we are assembling animatronic performers. Each animatronic unit will bring joy to the children at one of our many Freddy Fazbear locations. Just place the necessary components in the assembly chute conveniently located at the front of your workstation. Each work order is unique, so gather only the components as shown on the quad monitor array. Use the high voltage shock buttons to gently remove any unwanted critters that stumble onto the assembly line. Now, let's get to work. Well done. Let's see how you did. Oh no, it looks like there aren't enough components. Perhaps the instructions were not clear. Perhaps you should seek employment elsewhere. Oh no. It looks like there are a few parts left over. The system must do a random purge. Good enough. Piece of cake. Perfect. Animatronic engineering is just that simple. See you next time. Welcome back to Research and Development. Today, we are using science to pervert the mysteries of life and reanimate the inanimate. To begin, it is customary for the creator to give a melodramatic speech. Go on, I'll wait. All done? Good job. 
Now let's wake our little experiment with a controlled shock. Turn the crank to lower the platform, then throw the switch. It's alive, but lacking the necessary control module, namely the brain. So let's calibrate one. Use the laboratory tools to adjust the brain's vital characteristics. Use the blueprints as a guide for matching the correct colors, size, and neurofeedback loop. When you are satisfied, carefully place the brain in the creature's animatronic head cavity. Well done. It's time to introduce the creature to the kids for focus testing and troubleshooting.